tell me what you were doing this morning at 6.45? Sleeping. Sleeping? Sleeping. Every one of you was sleeping. <laughs> what, what were you doing yesterday at 7 in the evening? Uh, procrastinating. Homework, overtime, dinner, rushing to pick the kids up. So this is why I'm here, okay? I will let my photos do the talking while I facilitate you through. So if we speak from a typical Singaporean family, we tend to wake up early. We wake up early, we rush the kids to school. Then we rush to work. And what, we do, what do we do after work? We rush to pick the kids up. Then we rush them for dinner because kids cannot starve. Then we rush to manage their homework or even worse, some of you will bring your work home to do. Then we rush to sleep and what happens? It happens again. This whole cycle happens. So, if you're actually rushing through your life on a daily basis, how are you going to stop to appreciate what is actually happening around you? So therefore, I am here to show you what you are missing about when you're rushing in your daily life. Okay, before I get to the visuals, some statistics. The Pace of Life Project, which is a joint effort by Professor Richard Weissman, and the British Council tried to measure the speed of life in 32 cities. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, welcome to Singapore, where we top the list. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep, welcome to Singapore, where we top the list. So we walk an average of 60 feet every 10.55 seconds. <coughs> That's 60 feet every 10.55 seconds. So if you translate that into steps, it's actually 24 steps every 10.55 seconds. Look, this number may not scare you, but if you break it down even further, you're actually walking two steps every second. The next time you rush to work or rush anywhere in the morning during rush hour, just Slow down, take a look at how fast people are walking. It will scare you. Trust me, it will scare you. And we are actually walking 30% faster than we did in the 90s. So, if you walk this fast, what are you actually missing out? You are missing out scenes like this. Marina Bay in the morning. So, you know, the week ends then the weekends is here, and you'll be like, yay, sleep. I can sleep in. But what are you actually missing out when you're sleeping in over the weekends? Missing out since like this in the heartlands. And on Sunday, family day, everyone goes to the beach. Okay, not everyone. Some of you go, go to the beach. But you're missing out since like this at East Coast in Singapore. So just now I ask you, what you were missing when, uh, what you were doing yesterday at 7 p.m. So, I was out shooting, and this was the sunset yesterday. So, scenes like this, when you're rushing to pick the kids up, rushing for dinner, you're actually missing out scenes like this, in the heartlands, in the city. and in the heartlands again. Okay, this is a sunrise shot. I want to elaborate a little on this shot. If you, if you look to your left, is where oh, the, the housing estate is. Look at, the, look at how many households has their lights on. None. I was there at 6.30, and there was not a single soul around. And it was a weekend. <coughs> so these are just some of my collection over the years in Singapore as a light chaser, which my friends tend to call me. I wake up early, I go for sunrise, then I tend to spend my dinner shooting sunsets. Okay, all these are just photographs. What I'm going to show you next is they are, they are actually called time lapse videos. What time lapse what a time lapse video is is a they are, they are made up of hundreds or even thousands of photographs put together. 
and they will transit you through time in a, in a few seconds. So this is the first one which was shot in Badok Reservoir. The next one is outside Nikko Highway MRT. And two sunset shots. This was shot outside, shot at the top of Ion Sky. And the last one is at the Singapore National Stadium. <laughs> Okay, so do you all actually realize how much you all have missed out when you are unaware, no, unawake in the morning and unaware in the evening? Of course, this, this passion to be a light chaser doesn't just stop in Singapore. Let me share with you some travel experiences as a photographer when I'm overseas. Now, these shots are only achievable because I got up early for sunrises, I missed my dinner for sunsets, and I lost my sleep to corner stars, which is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna start with Hong Kong. Hong Kong, okay, I, I got up at 5.15 in the morning. I took a cab up to Victoria Peak. I was carrying my camera bag. It was about 20, 20 kg. And I had to walk about 20 minutes to this place. So I was walking, like, because I'm a Singaporean, I walk super fast. Uh, I probably walked like three, three steps per second, you know. And I got to this place. Many of my friends asked me, Dude, is, it, is it worthy to wake up this early? To just go for this? Well, you, you, you could have like slept in. Focus your energy on something else later. Do you think it's worth it? For me, honestly, I think it's... It, it, was, it, was, it was worth the... It was worth losing my sleep over it. At first, the sun didn't look too good, but when it rose, then the light penetrated through the clouds and the city just come alive in the morning. It was, oh, it was so surreal. <clears throat> the next one was shot in Bangkok. It was from a rooftop assess. And this place is pretty much accessible to the public, so no issues on that. And Surabaya, Indonesia, this was the place that uh, sparked my interest in astrophotography. So I went there with a group of photographers, a, a very, very small group of photographers. We went there, we touched down, we took the, the transport up to Mount Bromo. It was about three or four hours and we were tired. But we stayed up for the Milky Way and the Star Trails photography and these were the we stayed up through the night and we waited for the sunrise, which resulted in these shots. And the Milky Way shot, which sparked my interest in astrophotography. Of course, you can't see this in Singapore, which then, to, 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 because I was yearning for more, so I had to shoot more of this, which brings me to New Zealand. Now, I went, uh, New Zealand is a place I am very attached to for, I have no idea why. <laughs> Maybe because of the landscapes. <laughs> I went there last October, which was summer in New Zealand. The first day I, I, I touched down in Christchurch, I went to the, through the middle route to Queenstown and back to Christchurch. So I touched down in Christchurch, I was feeling a bit tired, you know, I decided not to do anything, but the sunset was pretty good. I was like, ah, it's okay, it'll be better tomorrow. And it was better tomorrow when I went down the Kapo. Now the sunset there is different from Singapore because after the sun dips into the horizon, all these colours come out to play. Singapore, it will only last for like a mere 10 minutes, and in New Zealand, it lasts for a good 30 to 45 minutes. Then, I could play around with more compositions, which resulted in another shot. And I was thinking, I should get dinner. Okay, because it was about 8.45, and I was hungry and I was cold. I wasn't used to the cold, I was over there, being a Singapore kid. And I drove around, I drove around, but 
guess what? Everyone was closed. Because they closed at 8, and sunset happens between 7.30 to 8.15. So I had no food. I had no food, but the stars were, com were coming out to play. And I stayed there. I took a lot of photos of the stars. <laughs> and when I finally went back to my apartment at about 2 plus in the morning, I saw the Milky Way setting again. And this was the apartment that I stayed in. So I stayed there for about another half an hour, then I was thinking, oh, I don't have enough sleep. I have to wake up four hours later for sunrise. A sunrise, would it? Definitely. Shot at a church of the Good Shepherd, I got this. After that, I continued my journey down to Wanaka, which where, where the famous Wanaka tree lies. Now this tree is so famous that it even has its name and place on it on Google Maps. You really just search for that Wanaka tree and you'll find it. Now this place, this tree, is amazing for me as a photographer because you see the sunrise, you see the sunset, and you see the Milky Way. And after the sun sets, the Milky Way was about vertical, so I had to wait for it to slowly set, which was two hours. And, but it was okay. I got more sleep, I got about five hours, and I woke up for sunrise again. And this travel plan continued throughout. More sunrise, and after that, more sunsets, and more astrophotography. And I finally reached Queenstown. Queenstown was the place where I didn't have to worry about uh, anything because they have nightlife, they have dinner. So I could go and shoot all I want and I can go for my dinner. And after that, I drove up to Glen Orkey. Glen Orkey was 45 minutes away from Queenstown. And I went there spe uh, specifically for sunset. The thing about Glen Orkey is they close even earlier. It's, a, it's such a small town that it closed at 5, or was it 6? And sunset, after sunset, while driving back to Queenstown, it was pitch dark. So that was another challenge for me. But it was all good, because ultimately I got more shots. And this was when I got back to Christchurch. It was up the Mount, Mount, mountain called Mount Pleasant. Yep. And I got my last astrophotography. Now, of course, there were some days that, you know, I just feel tired. I didn't have motivation. Or because I was learning how to fly a helicopter. Or because I was up in a World War II preserve pipe plane. Be jealous, guys. <laughs> or because I was having meals with my Airbnb host or jumping out of a plane. So look, I can be a normal tourist. I can enjoy myself like every one of you want to when you travel. But also, I take time to incorporate my photography into traveling. And all this was made possible through my lens because I was awake and I was aware. Thank you.